Welcome back to the bench for another glass blowing episode. In a previous video, I showed how to cut and fire polish glass tubes, but now it's finally to get into making something. The test tube is found in any place where science is conductive. It's synonymous with science itself. Any movie trying to depict science has test tubes somewhere thrown out the video where it shows science being used. In any chemistry lab, and anywhere. It's a versatile piece of equipment that has many uses and without it the field of science would not be what it is today. It's responsible for holding liquids or solids or anything you want to test. It's great for heating, great for cooling, great for chemical reactions, great for mixing, measuring. Its overall use is endless. So let's make some. They're quite simple to produce and allow you to practice skills that are used in almost any glass working project. Now, like most things, there are many methods to produce the test tube. With all of them, you're going to begin with a length of tubing. It is helpful to have one side been fire polished, this makes it safer to work with, and then you want to attach the blow hose assembly to the end that has been fire polished. Now, you don't need to use an assembly, but it makes things much easier. For more advanced projects, you're going to eventually need to have a blow hose assembly. All a blow hose assembly is, is a tube with a spin point that allows air to be blown in while spinning the tube. It makes it easier to see what you're doing and makes it easier to move parts around and add air into it. But without one, you're going to need to heat up the tube, move it to your mouth, and apply pressure. This makes it a bit more difficult to see how the glass is changing and moving. So a blow hose assembly just makes the process easier. And they're quite cheap and simple. A basic swivel like the brass one you see here, about $15. And then the tubing is $5 to $6 depending on what length you get. Now we're ready to start. First, attach the blow hose assembly. Then start bringing the heat onto the tube. Slowly bring up to the heat while spinning. It is important to not stop spinning because this will cause it to become uneven. Spinning is a necessary step in glass work. It's versatile in almost every single project that will be done. Spinning is quite simple. Use three fingers to spin it and use the last two fingers you have to hold it in place. Spinning needs to be a nice even pace. Don't try to spin it too quickly to where you have unevenness where one side is going to be in the flame more often, try to spin it with a uniform pace. It also helps to practice with a little flag on it like you see here, so you can see at what pace you're spinning. Now, you don't need a piece of glass to practice this. If you're bored in class, just take out your pencil and spin the pencil. It's the same concept and allows you to get a practice in almost anywhere. Now back to producing the tube. Now you're going to slowly want everything to melt in. At this point, you can let it cool and you have a basic test tube, but it helps if you pull off the glass and pull it to a nice uniform point. The more uniform you get it while pulling it off, the overall easier it is going to get to have a test tube. Now, when you're spinning it, you want to have it spin at a nice uniform pace and let it come down. You'll have a blob that begins to form at the end. Once this blob reaches a flat point inside, take it off the heat and blow in slightly. Now, if you don't get a uniform blow in the beginning to where the outer wall diameter matches the bottom of the tube, simply put it back into the heat and repeat the process. Let it slowly cool back in and then blow out again until you have a nice uniform case. Now, in this case, I was able to get a nice uniform blow in the beginning, so we are done making the bottom of the test tube. At C, it's a quite simple and easy process that can be done over and over again. Now it's time to finally cut the tube and make it into the test tube. Just like I shown in a previous video, you can cut it. I used to have a nice glass tube cutter, but that was cheap and I accidentally dropped it and shattered. So we'll be using the file method, cutting it, and then applying a little bit of water, wiping the excess water off, and breaking the tube. Next, wipe off the excess water, 
and bring it into the heat for a nice fire polish. You can be done here, but another nice add-on you can do is flaring out the tube to where you have a nice lip on the edge. This makes it easier to hold if you're using a pair of tongs or doing anything else with it. But as I said before, you can just leave it without the lip on it. The lip can be easily made using either your pliers or using a conical marver. All a marver is, is a graphite tool used to move the glass around. These come in many, many shapes and sizes. Depending on what job, you'll use a different one. They also come in brass and a bunch of other different materials. Graphite is just the cheapest and it holds heat nice and well and it's easy to work with. Thanks for watching, and if you liked the video, please drop a like, and if you like my content, please consider subscribing. And if you don't like this video, check out another one. I'm sure you'll find one that you like, which will gain your subscription. And if you want to support the channel and my creative endeavors and my scientific endeavors, please consider checking out my eBay store, link in the description, where you will find different things I have for sale, such as chemicals and elements. So, see you later. If you look at the bottom, you can actually see crystals forming as the metal cools down. And you can see on the top, there's a nice crystal structure that is formed. Well, I don't know, but I've been told uranium ore is worth more than gold. I sold my cad, I bought me a Jeep, I got that bug, and I can't sleep. Uranium! Uranium fever has gone and got me down. Uranium fever is spreading all.